trip was incredible and the scenery stunning. But this video is to be about eels, not scenery. So firstly, as I talk through the introduction, I'll take the opportunity to show you some of the scenery we saw on the way. After which the video will be full of eels. This video takes a look at the eel through an angler's eyes. There are two types of eels to be found running up the rivers of New Zealand. We shall identify the differences between these later in the video. The long fin eel grows to a much greater size than the short fin and it is the larger long fin which we are after on this mission. No one can explain why these eels grow to such a massive size. The largest biologically confirmed eel was 50 and a half pounds and almost six feet long. These days, biologists claim that the biggest eels weigh nearer to 45 pounds. <coughs> Stories we've heard about huge eels in New Zealand often relate to them being present in large numbers. Unfortunately, such stories are now out of date, and though there's still some big eels around, they aren't in the numbers that they were 30 years ago. The main reason for this decline of the long fin is the loss of habitat, which has had a far more damaging effect on eel stocks than has the impact of commercial eeling. Although long fin eels can weigh as much as 20 kilos, they are slow to develop and will take 30 to 100 years to reach this size. The people of New Zealand have been slow to develop too. Only in the last 30 years have they gone about land drainage and creek straightening. Suddenly, overnight, the habitat of the long fin eels was vastly reduced. The straightening of creeks took out undercut banks, deep holes and waterside vegetation on which the eels depended for their survival. This resulted in great numbers of hungry eels swimming up and down the creeks looking for food. Hungry eels are easy to catch, very easy. So came the commercial netters of the 1980s. They took many tons of eels which were then present in hungry shoals. The longfin is the top predator in New Zealand rivers. It's mainly a flesh eater and they eat not only live food but they will readily strip a dead carcass. A few years ago, there was a motoring accident in the Nelson region. A young man drove his car into the river and was injured. He woke up in hospital the next day after being anaesthetized to find he had a leg missing. It had been eaten away by the eels as he lay unconscious with blood oozing from his leg. Using their wonderful sense of smell and their sonar system, the eels will hunt any living thing in the water. Fish, birds, cattle, and even fly fishermen wading with bare legs have been eaten, bitten by eels smelling food. In this video, some eels can be seen investigating us on the bank See if we are food and it becomes possible to imagine the next step of evolution when eels will come on the bank to land come onto land to catch their food river or the other name used for it is the Nile River and I'm more certain how to pronounce the Nile River, so we're going to go up the Nile. I've always fancied going up the Nile. One step beyond. I have to wade up the river because the bankside vegetation is just too much. actually come out of the water to see if we're food. He likes to taste of that. He's actually took it out of the water there. 
As you can see, it wasn't in the water when he took that. Just trying to get up the bank for it. Ooh. He's off, but he'll come back. Because he thinks we're food. So it's there. Uh, Smell it, you know. He's looking for it under the rock. Mm. He's obviously just totally oblivious to us. He's lost the scent now. He's looking for it along, amongst the rocks. It's over here, matey. How do you do? The seal's just that. He's never seen a human, that one, has he? No, thinks me a food, obviously. He's looking at me, I'm waving my hand about now, and he's actually, there it is, he's actually looking at me. Or he was. He's two feet away, eh? Hmm. He's just, uh, Mooching it out. Now this has actually got me bait and it's not hooked, it just won't let go of the bait. And it's quite big as well. Oh. Uh. Doesn't like the light, does it? Can't see in the light. There you go, he's found it. Just going off sense of smell. I'll try and get him in the landing net, right? This is, this is how to catch him without a hook. I'm going to try and get him on the shore. And we've got no hook on. Oh. Also, I've no wire trace on him. He's just fitting through the line. I'd better put a wire trace on and catch him again. got no hook on. I'm going to try and land an eel. He's not using a hook. It's rather a large one as well. I've got a bit, an eel section on actually. We don't use a like to kill eels, but we just killed a small one and we're going to use it all for bait. Because the luncheon meat that I've got was too soft, they would have just shredded it up considering I've got no hook. Let's see if I can just coax him in. How to do it, folks? Oh, how to land a big eel with no hook? That's a double. No hook. <laughs> <laughs> get, get a ten pounder just caught with a no hook rig. And uh, he's a bit slippery customer, we're going to put him back rather than keep him in the sack. I don't think we'll get a, much of a trophy shot here. Unless you can get one at that peak. Photo. There it is, ten pounder caught on a gorge rig with no hook going back. Now look at the head on that.
sun's just risen and we're heading for that mountain and beyond. What we're actually doing on this trip is following the river through the bush. The bankside vegetation is actually impenetrable. And these rivers make rather nice paths. You have to keep crossing them and banging your feet on rocks. But we found it's the only way we can get out to these places in the outback. The advantage is that we, this is high summer here, and the nearest you get to a drought, so the rivers are at base level. When it's been raining, you'd have no chance of getting up here. You wouldn't even consider it. The creek is getting bigger boulders now. Very hard going to walk on. The bush is still impassable at the edges. So we're still carrying up the, up the stream. There's a few smaller trout now and the water's noticeably colder. We can tell we're getting right up in the mountains. It's rougher going, isn't it, Pete, now? Yeah. yeah. Can you feel the cold as well? Yeah. Mountain stream water. But is there any eels up here? Loads. You don't think it might be too cold for them? Loads. No, there'll be loads, eh? Let's find a good pool for tonight. Not what you call easy walking, this footpath. Hardest walks I've ever been on. The size of these rocks you have to hold yourself over is unbelievable. And with a 50 pound rucksack on your back, it gets your legs, your ankles. Starting to tell now, we're bumbling around now. Probably time to take a break before we get to make some mistakes and lose our footing. Just a gentle stroll, I said to Pete. You'll be all right. <laughs> Run out of energy. Somewhere right up the river. We're never going to find our way to this upland lake. We're not sure exactly where we are now. The usual fascinating countryside. Dry Cave Creek. Blue Worms of New Zealand. What we've actually got here now is a glow there. You can see all those fine threads hanging down. There's actually a colony of them here, and they live under an overhang. And it actually looks like the starry sky at night, where all these little glow worms are glowing under, underhang of the bank. So any insects, sandflies, mosquitoes, etc. Jump up from the ground under the overhang, thinking it's a starry sky above them. And they get stuck in those tendrils full of sort of moisture droplets. And now we're going to see if we're still filming with the no light on, see if he shows up. There is with no light on. And with the light back on. Now, you can see all those blue lights. This is the colony of glowworms. Doesn't that look like a starry sky at night? If I was a little midge or a mosquito, 
was likely to fly up at that, thinking it was a scar. I hope they catch many, many sandflies. Sky at night, blue worms in New Zealand. We've had breakfast and tea camp. Pete's repacking his gear, and we have aborted the mission. This is the path home. We've got climbs down the river, straight from. We decided we've come too high. The water's freezing up here. There's only a few small trout and salmonoids. So we're going to abort the mission now and it'll take us a whole day to walk back down the river or even a day and a half. Well done. Just, uh, we're further down the river now and the water is warmer than it was when we were up in the mountain region and the rocks have got slime on them now because the current's not so fierce, they're not getting ground together. The further up the rocks all grind together and wear the slime off. So we've got algae on the rocks and the, we're amongst eels again now. I've just caught one while we're having lunch. And caught it on a piece of chopped ham with pork. You can spot eels like this around here. Obviously, it's just crawled out of a dark hole somewhere, but it's jet black. You just spend a lot of time over that lighter bottom. I imagine it would get the uh, paler colouring. Stalking eels on the west coast of New Zealand in creeks full of crystal clear water. Spot the eel, put your bait on its nose. Now he's definitely looking at the bait. Edging forward, put Pete's rod down into the water, pointing straight at the bait. And the eel's just Sensing in on it now. You can see a white dot there, that's his face. Neil inching closer. Turning. Inches away now. Now he's got it. Boys and ready to strike. Pound class boat rod. And it's in the net. Ten. Ten, he says. Let's weigh it. Hard to get in the sack, aren't they, Pete? Right. You actually have to fold them in half because they're too long. You put the head and tail in at the same time. Bang on eight, that. Eight pounds. 
Mrs. Over, eight. Right, we've put it back now. Let's see if Stephen Eels go into this entanglement. About five or six pound eel. So we've made the decision to fish here tonight. Try and tempt the eels right into the shallow. Tuna chunks. Tuna chunks, what have you done with the oil? Poured it in upstream so it just sort of flows down and gives them a taste. No food value in the oil, they just sense uh, it in the water. So we're hoping that the scent will bring them out of the lairs in daylight, is basically. Yeah. We can put some in the edge, you see, at your feet later and get them yeah. to come up the bank or something. I'll leave it on that rock there, look. Okay, lovely. How deep is it there? It's about five inches. As deep as that? I'm just throwing the tuna chunks in and we've got an eel mooching about. Coming to investigate. I think that's the one we saw earlier. It's smaller this one, it's bigger than that. Right, there's probably a few under there. What I noticed last night when uh, you kept losing your bait, they swim down river and pick the scent trail up on the current and home in on it again. Yeah, he's going round him, he's owned in, he'll go downstream. Do a loop round and then follow the current up. So yeah. But you get some very strange back eddies as well. There he does. True to word. Home round, got the current coming down. Or is he gonna come and look it up, eh? We're going back into there. We knew the eels in there, didn't we? Yeah. Screaming out, big eels. Now we've bung this tuna in. And eels just come out of there. Now there is actually a flick that we've built up. You can just see it on the surface there. There's another eel coming downstream now. And he's going straight onto this tuna. We know it. They just can't resist it. Now he's actually come downstream, so how the hell he's got the smell. It's flowing upstream this yeah, year it's, in a back eddy. It's going right round the... That's how he's centred in on it. It proves they are scent feeders and not tight feeders, even though the water's so clear. And it looks like he's going to mop all our tuna up. I think we should lay a trail of shot camera port and get him to come right up the bank and put a bait on the shore and get him to come three inches out the water to get it. Yeah. We actually, I actually had a bait on a rock the other night and a, an eight pound deal from flopped its head out and grabbed it in the middle of the net. That's because the juices are trickling off it into water and it can smell it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, he's having a good over up of our bait there. He's nearly got it all. I do notice about these eels, compared to our UK eels, they've got a thicker head and neck. I think that's why they don't fight as much on the rod and line. They tend to shape the head more, rather than using the whole body as a propeller. Would you agree with that, Pete? Yeah. They don't seem to fight pound for pound like our eels, do they? I don't think they're as good at swimming backwards as our eels. They're That's probably it. They seem to just shake about like a trout. That's right, yeah. Well, there he is, going backwards, though. Yeah. They don't seem to have the force of our eels. No. They've got more 
we'll have to work that one out anyway. There's certainly a difference, and we suspect that it's to do with the thickness of the, the head. Yeah. As Pete said earlier, all the uh, muscles are in the jaw. And then put some chopped ham with pork, which is mulched up and flattened onto the rock. So the water's just dabbling on it. And hopefully the eel or eels will follow this trail up the rock and then take that off the rock. And when they've eaten that, we'll probably put a bait on the rock if we get that far. So far, we've only seen one eel in this pool. But we suspect that after dark, there'll be quite a few more eels to come out. But you can never really tell on these West Coast rivers. But we'll give it a go. There's another eel just come out. Things are starting to happen. And there's the other. Let's see if they'll share the same bit of ground bait. The eel is actually guarding the bait. I'm not letting it near. The small coming in onto the rock. You can smell that bait. There he goes, he's got that scent. When they lift the nose up in the water, they we can, we can actually smell it. You lift the head up off the bottom and pinpoint it. There's our rock. Reels works way out of the water at this. But it's only very shallow. Back 
Back on the bridge over the River Nile and we'll take a look at this food we put on that rock last night see if it's been eaten and it's light but the sun's not yet risen the sand flies everywhere out now then yes most of it's been eaten. Now we left a pile of tuna on the very top of that rock. There's not very much left. It's definitely been eaten after we went to bed last night. Now, this is interesting. You can see the mark of where a big eels lay on the bottom there as it's approached. Now that looks bigger than anything we saw last night. I think the bigger one might have come later on. It's also an interesting thing to look for when we're stalking eels on the river in daylight. To find pools with marks where eels have lay up in the shallows like that. We weren't sure before whether those marks were caused by a log that had been lying on the bottom had been moved by the current or whatever. We had our suspicions it was an eel mark. And now there's no doubt about it. That eel's come up there towards the food. It's actually lay there. And you can see further marks there where they were rooting under the bottom of that stone. So we're now going to leave this part of the River Nile. We've done the upper reaches in the valleys up in the mountains. It was too cold, too rocky and there was no eels. We actually went too high up. As we came into the lower upper reaches where we are now there was more eels progressively found more eels as we came down the river. These are well oxygenated waters here and we certainly know the big eels like to hole up in these places. What we're now going to do is drive down to the lower reaches of the river and walk up a scenic gorge Go a couple of so we're going to go a couple of kilometres higher up the river. We've just met some cavers and they told us if you go to the cave entrance two kilometres up the path and put rotten stake near the cave entrance, massive eels come out within 15 minutes and they do this trick regularly. They don't seem to mind that we're going to go and catch them. So cave entrance. First thought is that the water looks very murky, almost stagnant. I've been used to this crystal clear water of the West Coast Creeks recently. This does look rather black to me. What are you doing there, Pete? I'm throwing a bit of juice off the spam. Juice off the spam in the margin. See if we can get them going. I can see there's a fat flecking on the surface. The young lady was taking a team of cavers into this cave and she told us that if you wave a bit of rotten or burnt steak around in the cave entrance, big, big eels come out within 15 minutes. That's their version. We haven't got rotten steak or burnt steak, so we're going for the chopped ham with pork approach which we're quite confident with, because they seem to home in on the scent quite easily. What size hook's that? 
don't know. Don't you think it damaged the mouths, these big ups? Big aren't I'm landing them on size four. Doubles. Alright. Not had uh, any runs in the last ten minutes. Well, I just caught Pete in to let me throw some more bait in. I'm going back to carp fishing memories. I'm mashing up chopped ham with pork and putting a big bed of it down. And the carp used to fizz up on it. You actually see the fat coming up the surface where it is. This should lay a scent trail and draw them out the nooks and crannies. Now, we've got some by Pete. And some by mine. The one eel on the Nile River Bridge last night at about ha half a tin or more. So, I'm sure that uh, this will get eaten up. But the eels will find it better because the freshwater eel has got the greatest sense of smell of any fish. The only set of fish with a greater sense of smell than a freshwater eel is a great white shark. You got one? Nice one. Your rod was certainly bucking about then. Was it? Swung him in. <laughs> Dusty, but we had to take him to the landing net rather than the landing net to him. Clean off when we go back. It's a bit of a steep, bit of a steep bank, isn't it? To Plenty, of it this time of night. Plenty of snags in the margins. We took the heels to the net which was on the bank. We swung this in. How heavy can you swing an eel? It's five. Five pounds. Nice one. And I swung it in. It's probably about midnight now, Are I should imagine. Take a photo then with the... yeah. We've dropped onto Nipara Pools near Alexandra. Well, tonight we've arrived with some fresh beef, chunks of beef, cast in in daylight and caught an eel straight away of about seven or eight pounds. You mad bugger. <laughs> got, it. got him in. Yeah. What a scrap. Got another line. Too many rods in here. Eh? It's not very really big. No. Hmm. Black coloured in here, isn't it? Yeah, it's the weed, the dark in the weed, isn't it? Yeah. Big G. About seven or eight or something. Yeah, same as the last one. Really. Landed last night. A five, a six, and an eight. This one's six twelve. And if you notice, it's only got one eye. I've got no eye there at all. Doesn't even move when I go near it. This is not actually that unusual. We catch 
I've had a few eels in the UK with only one eye, believe it or not. Now the other eye, it's just going a bit white round the edges. I'm wondering if that one's going to cataract over as well. We've often caught them like such, haven't we, Pete? Mm. What we have caught is eels with big eyes when they've gone big, ready for going back to sea, like silver eels. And they've been in a water where they can't get back to sea. And we think that those eyes then start to shrink and cataract over, possibly even drop out. We have seen that in the Shropshire Mares. So we've had it's, it's, them with eyes that rattle about and everything, haven't we? Yeah, we had one with a loose eyeball in it. It's like one of those games where you get the ball in the, the hole. No. Now that's the old upside down eel trick, that. Look at that, no life in it. It'll soon be away in the water. Eight twelve going back. And there's a six fourteen. An old upside down eel trick. We're heading for Lake Paringa. It's a perfect night for it. We've got a dead rabbit we're going to put in on a stringer, but we can't throw it in yet because we're on a campsite and everyone keeps washing the cups and collecting drinking water from the lake. So I'd better throw it in after dark, because it's got some beer. Lake Ringer, campsite. Clouds on the hill. And the hills around here are covered in the bush. pound 12 ounce this one well yeah 11 12 thought like hell that one that's a lovely deal that A double going back. Yeah. Both types of eels you get in New Zealand on this water, Lake Paringo. Apart from that big double long fin, we've got two smaller ones here. This is a short fin, which is similar to what we get in the UK. There's its anal vent, and if you look, the, the ventral fin just comes up to the vent underneath. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And on top, the fin doesn't come past the vent. It's only just about as long as the ventral fin. That's a quarter of an inch long, but the top dorsal fin doesn't come past the vent at the bottom on the short fin. Now next to him, we've got a baby long fin. On this one, you can see the vent underneath. Uh, the ventral fin again comes to the vent, but if you look at the top fin, it comes to there, the dorsal fin, 
comes well past the vent. That's how we identify the long fin, which actually grows larger. And if you look at the features, although these short fin can vary in the shape and size of head, from wide, broad mouth to narrow pointed nose, these long fin tend to have more of a dolphin shaped head and those sort of features. You can see that when he goes to a double he'll look like these other brutes we've been catching. Whereas him, he's like a good old English eel. I'd like to see him go 12 pound in the UK. Right, long and short fin going back. Here's a race, long fin v short fin. Let's see who's got the inner the most. Like the old long fin wins. Oh no, short is after him. Shrimp. Back on Lake Karinga. Steep drop off in the head. We caught a near 12 pound eel here last time. As, long, as well as a lot of smaller short fin and smaller long fin eels. But it's full of boot bait and it's booted up. Drops off steep here. I've got one a few feet out which is still very deep, and the other's a bit further out, which is very, very deep. Barry's just caught a small trout on a Wickham's Fancy on the fly. First cast on the drop, it had only just touched the water when it took it, but it had been stalking it, he knew where it was. That's what's going out on the stringer tonight. Bait, that one. There it is. That's a nice one. Oh, not in the net. Not in the net. Hey. Nice one. Get a closer look at him. Mm, yeah, he's nice. Right head. Yep. Like I said, that's size four Sidley up and a tiny bit of bait, about the size of a 10 p. The weather's just cleared a bit, we can see the other side of the lake, so we're going to pull the eels out and have a look. Barry had two doubles and I had a, a double later on. We've actually got three double figure eels in one night session. Which is uh, some fishing. We were up all night, unhooking millions of boots. I got 11. Yeah. I just uh, used a big bait and shook them off at the edge. They were, I wasn't actually hooking them, they were just grabbing on the end of the bait. I used a smaller bait and smaller hook and waded through the boots. Lost all his hooks. No. I had to cut off a couple that were deep up. One, one, of, them, one of them's in this sack. I couldn't, it was well down. Must have had it on the spot, so. This is the best catch of eels either of us has ever seen, isn't it, Pete? Mm. A 12 12, a 12 6, and an 11 4. Two 12s and an 11 in one night session. We worked hard for these. Wading through the boots. That's why we're staying tonight. 
Over 30 pound of eels. In th three eels. We probably both had over 10 other eels, up to, up to 6 pound. As well as these two. What a catch. Come on. They're a bit lively these, because we've been in the nest all night. I'm just starting to calm them down now. With a bit of gentle persuasion, we should get them to lie to the camera. I've got a big bucket over there, I'm going to wash the sand off them, clean them up. See if we can lie them out for a presentation shot. Yeah. There you go. That just proves you there's a one hook that's been spat out in the net. Bit of bait with it. Now that was hooked well back inside the mouth where I couldn't reach it, out of reach it was, and it's managed to eject it in the night. That proves that eels can get rid of hooks. It's better to leave the hook in than to go poking about, because all the organs, the heart and everything of the eel is all just here. And uh, you could damage it by putting a disgorger in there. So if you cut it and leave the hook in, the eel will invariably get rid of it itself. I'm just going to get the biggest one out now. I think it's that one, isn't it? Or is it that one, Pete? Hmm. Toss up. Sunfly City, I'll have to put that shirt back. Yeah. Partners in slime. Three double figure eels. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Who's the biggest then? That one. You know, I think it was that middle one that weighed more, wasn't mm. it? Outlet, which is actually a, a slaughterhouse this is this country. Gross. It's known as a freezer house because it freezes all the lambs up for export. So, allegedly, I've been told by about five different people in this country about this outlet at Matura, full of really massive fields. They all say it's as thick as your leg, but we'll see. Park today. Where all these no parking signs are. This looks like the worst place I've ever fished. Let's hope the eels are massive. A slaughterhouse outlet, freezer plant. Zanderman's nightmare. This stinks. That outflow over there. 
that brown coloured water that's all blood coming out oh probably the biggest slaughterhouse I've ever come across no wonder we've seen so much New Zealand lamb it really is horrible here it stinks of rotting flesh let's see what we can do there's an urban angler at home he actually likes places like this fishes places in the UK like this Dander Man's Nightmare. Base of the day, roadkill rabbit. Angler of the day, the urban angler. Just caught an eel, but he wouldn't wait for me to get the camera out. Naughty boy. Said he was going to catch another. We don't catch many in the day, so it'd be nice to film them. Water, the colour of rotting blood. Stinking, horrible place. Lovely. I usually choose picturesque waters with a lot of wildlife about sitting in peace and tranquility. Not today though. Well, this is a lovely place to have a picnic. Lovely river. Sound effect. Bloody glorious. Peace and tranquility of fishing. Gummy, bloody, rotten brown water. Concrete. Bricks, corrugated iron, steam valve, nightmare swim. I haven't had a bite yet. So I'm going to pack up and go and sit in the car and wait for Pete to do his business. I can't handle this. If I had to fish somewhere like this all the time, I'd pack up fishing. Just as I've said that, Pete's got personal best deal by a long way. you got the net haven't you Pete? Yeah. This looks like a 20 this. I think I might stick around after all. That's massive that. How's he going to get that in the net on his own? He's got his hook stuck on the net now. He's going to have to launch it up the bank. He's done it. He's in the net. Personal best deal, that, from a slaughterhouse. If I've got a fish here for eels like that, I'll give it up, me. Is it a 20 or a 30? About 10, is that all? Look massive from up here. 12 pounder from the griller. Just going to try and get a still photograph of it now. This is a good example of somewhere where you can catch really big eels, but I'd rather not. Right, it's doing my head in now, so I'm going to go. I can hear it in that slaughterhouse. I can hear hundreds of dogs barking. Christ knows why they're there. They must feed them the offal or something. They sound in torment and I don't like it. But if you want big eels, I'd recommend it. If you like this sort of place. But personally, 
I'll give it a miss. Over and bloody well out. See, it wasn't in the water when it took that.